Hey guys, so I wanted to show you my solution to the chow machine. <laughs> I ended up buying this cart. It's heavy duty plastic. And Joe put the chow machine on the cart. She screwed it in so there doesn't go anywhere. And then this is like a chute. Because remember that it comes out of here, but it also comes out of here. So when it comes out, I don't know why this fell like this. It didn't do that earlier, but okay, I guess I'll adjust it. So it'll come out, and then I'm going to put a container here, and it'll be ready to go. So this is the only solution that I have found to where I don't have to do this inside my house. I have a, a door down here that leads to the, the back of the property and I could go out there and I can chow out there. Look at the wheels. They're pretty big and thick and this cart holds up to 500 pounds so it's heavy duty. Um, I got it on walmart.com and you know I'm not in I'm not affiliated with them or anything I just I just happen to shop on there and, and I found this and I, I like it I like it and I like the fact that it's slender so it doesn't take up a lot of room so this is one of my solutions so we're gonna see how this is gonna work out anyway I sourced a hundred percent pure Red Wigglers, Messenia Fatitas. Yes, I did. It took some doing to find these worms. And they weren't cheap. But I'm gonna I'm starting to breed them. And hopefully I'll have some up for sale eventually. I mean it takes a little bit of time for them, you know. But they are they are pure red wigglers and the guy that, that I got them from he, I know he's a reputable farmer and he keeps them separated from everything else in a controlled environment. So, and he's been doing it for years. Look at the clitellum. That's how you can tell. They're really, really nice looking worms. They're young still. Um, but that's okay because they're going to grow up. And they're doing very well, very well. Look, I have them here in the, I found some grapes that weren't doing so hot. And they, they love it. Look at that. That's the underside of them. Look at that. So I will be having these up for sale when they, you know, get going. It's gonna be a bit though. For now, I'm still selling my other red wigglers, which I call red wiggler composting worms because, you know, there's always a chance there's some blues in there, which guys, I have said it before, there is nothing wrong with the blue worm. The blue worm is an exceptional composting worm. They are really, really amazing worms. And if you keep them in the right environment, just like every other worm, they are not going to give you a problem. I have people contacting me, asking me if I only have blues like they want to just buy a hundred percent blues for me and i don't have only blues so it's it's uh it's okay and these are my european microbes look at all the little cocoons everywhere and pretty soon those are gonna hatch so oh look at that big boy that's a beautiful euro right there Look at that. So I've been giving them some discarded fruit that I found in my fridge because, now well, we're not going to eat it. And they really love it. And like I told you guys before, my breeders, you know, a lot of people only feed them chow. And I feed them chow, but I also like to spoil them with other little things that I know they'll like. I mean, who wants to eat only chow? <laughs> oh, but look at them. They are nice looking worms. They really are. And they love leaves. So they're doing very well. 
so I'm going to take care of them and then, you know, I'll keep you guys posted. And I'll probably go live and find the sleep again. All right, so I'll be back. Let's peek at these Louisiana swamp worms and see how they're doing. So, I've decided to try a different type of bedding. Now, I have done this bedding in the past. And I'll tell you the reason why I've decided to do this. Okay, there's one. Let me see if I could... Oh, okay, there they all are. Well, a lot of them. <laughs> they're, they're everywhere. In this bedding of mine. Um, they're cute worms, aren't they? I love them. They're a cousin to the red wiggler. Um, they are not blue worms. See, if it was a blue worm, it wouldn't have that little bulgy clitellum. They're a cousin to the red wiggler. A little bigger than the red wigglers, but a little smaller than the European night crawlers. So anyway, this bedding. These are like what do you call them? Wood shavings or wood flakes? They're like wood shavings. And then I have shredded a newspaper and I have like a type of pit moss. It's not peat moss, pit moss. And it's like a type of shredded paper. And I'm gonna go show you what it is. So this is pit moss. It's similar to that other stuff I bought that I'm doing the experiments with. Let's see? And I get this at the farm store. So you know, I live in a farm community, and I'll show you the brand. Now, it doesn't mean you're going to have this brand, but, you know. This stuff is pretty cheap, and it comes in, like, huge amounts. Um, another type of bedding I use is straw. And this is the pine shavings or I wouldn't call it sawdust because it's not a powder and it's fine shavings. I wonder what would happen if I put this through my grinder. What do y'all think? Hmm. That just came to mind. Um, I use that. Another type of bedding I like to use is straw. It's chopped up straw. The stuff is like very cheap. Um, and I'll tell you why I've been using these, uh, the bedding. Because down here in the wormery, even though I'm indoors and it's, you know, I control the temperature, um, it's cold here outside. So I've been putting extra water in here because the heat in the room is just drying out my bedding. And if you want to breed worms, they need to be more on the wet side. So I'm noticing that. These wood flakes and that pit moss stuff and the straw is actually maintaining the moisture in the bin, which I'm happy with because it's it's just less work for me. Um, and I've been checking on them every single day just to so I can keep an eye, make sure. And they are going down. Look into the into the ooh a little swamp worm ball. I don't know what's exciting down there. Like I didn't put anything down there, but anyway. <laughs> I'll let them do their thing. So it's maintaining its moisture, and when it's moist, the worms are happy. So let me switch hands here because I don't like to mess with the worms with one hand without gloves and then use the same hand because, believe it or not, that's how cross contamination can happen, and it happens very easily and it's accidental. So over here, I managed to get 100% pure Senia fatitas which are the red wigglers. And as you can see, I set them up the same way. And they're loving it. Nice looking worm. See the clitellum? I wish this would focus. Some days it likes focusing, some days it doesn't. Nice looking worm. Look, they're all into the bedding. They love this bedding. And I've been checking the moisture. And they're doing very well. Let me see. Yeah, nice looking worm. So guys, I've had a rough week. 
I've had a rough week. Believe it or not, I had COVID again. It wasn't as bad as the first time. It just felt like I had a cold, but it still like just takes the wind out of you as far as energy, but I'm over it. I've been over it for a little bit. Um, I fell down the stairs in the front of my house. Look at the clatel. And I slipped on the ice and I hit the stairs. I hit whatever was on the side, like a giant flower pot. I have bruises all over my shoulders. I'm like really freaked up. <laughs> I know I laugh, but I can't help it. It's either that or you go crazy. So I just got to laugh. So I gave these guys a banana. Let's, uh, let's see what they're doing, if they're doing anything with it. Okay, they're starting to move in. They're moving on in. Oh, yeah. Wow. You know, a lot of people don't have pure Asenia fatidas anymore because the worm population out for sales um, got overwhelmed with blues being mixed in. But, you know, I'll always say it. I don't see anything wrong with blue worms. You know, in my other bins of red wiggler composting worms, I, I must have blues. I don't know. But there must be some. And that's okay because the blue worm and the red wiggler and the European nightcrawler, you know, they all live in harmony together. Um, the blue worm has an amazing composting ability. It really does. You want a composting worm that eats a lot, like that's the one. Red wigglers are the easiest to raise. And you know, when I when I had blues years ago, um, I never had a problem with them. I heard a lot of people saying that they crawl in the rain, and you know, they might. But from my years of experience, if your bins are in the right condition that the worms like, they're not going anywhere. They're just not. Oh, look at that, I had a grape in here. Oh, look, they're all over here by the grapes. So, you know, it's a good idea to clean out your fridge once in a while. We all have some rotting fruit or something in the back. And the worms just love it. They really do. So, today, I, before I go to work, because I work in the evening, I planned on going outside and using my chopper grinder machine, but... I woke up and it's pouring rain here, so that's not happening. But you know, I'm very pleased with this. I also ordered a electric watering machine so that I can water easy. And of course it arrived smashed and I'm still fighting with the company to either give me a refund or just send me a replacement. So I'm dealing with that. So yeah, I've had a rough week. Oh, my website decided to go a little crazy this week, too. Yeah. I received orders that I didn't see for two days because it never uploaded into my website. So, <laughs> luckily, the people that purchased were very understanding. Um, and I've been working with uh, the website platform Wix to get that fixed. So, I think I got it fixed, but I'm still dealing with it. So, I can't wait to use this thing. And I'm really curious about the the pine shavings. I wonder if the straw would grind. It's very lightweight though, so I'm you know I don't know. But this bedding, you know, I get it at the farm store. And you know, people say that, and this is true, that you buy worms so they could eat your compo eat your scraps and eat all that. And yeah, they do. But I love to experiment with my worms. I love to see what kind of bedding they do the best in that they like. Um, even before I started selling worms, I've always done that um, because I just care about them. And I figured if I'm going to have them, I'm going to do everything I can to make them happy. So this is why I buy these things. <laughs> and uh, so far, you saw them. They seem to like them. So let me switch hands again and let's check on the... European night crawlers. All right. So I don't 
don't see any on the surface. They probably heard me coming in. If I could find them. Oh, there they are. Right there are some. They're just so quick to get away. These are young, but they're still a good sized fishing worm. Very good looking worm. It's time to put some fresh bedding in here. Look at that one. He's a nice looking worm. And again, they have the same sort of bedding, except on these guys, I put more leaves because I just happen to have a lot of dry leaves. And uh, European Nightcrawlers, they like the leaves. They really do. I always see them like right underneath the leaves, especially when I moisten the leaves. It's like it kind of brings them up and they like like exploring underneath just to see what's new. And I find them a lot. See, there they, there they are. And, you know, they're doing very well. So as they get older, I pick out the big ones and I put them in one of the breeder bins behind me. And then the cycle just repeats. You know, I don't have like a worm farm with a, with all the acres people have. At least um, not for now. This is what I can handle for now. And you gotta do what you can handle. The windrows, they're gonna go in in the summer. I'm not sure how many I'm gonna have yet. The trick to windrows is you have them outside you're at the mercy of the weather you have to keep them moist you just have to if your windrows go dry your worms are gonna die they really are and for those of you that want to have a windrow you know you don't have to have some giant thing you could do a little one this is another european nightcrawler bin i just started like this is a nursery bin a big one but um i put some big ones in here so they could start breeding and doing their thing so I'm checking on them the moisture look at them all the moisture is very good now this one has that sawdust and the the hay mixed in I've used hay in the past actually it's not hay it's straw I've used it in the past um, and they eat it they love it it just takes longer to break down which you know just makes it easier look at this guy and your castings, when you use straw and just natural things like this, will be really nice. So you notice nothing, the bedding in these bins, nothing is fake, you know. It's things that would be outside, and straw and leaves and, you know, sawdust if you're chopping wood. A lot of people like, like chop wood around here. So this needs a plastic, and I'm going to cut that down and put it on. But anyway, I'm hoping to go live this weekend again. Or maybe next weekend I'm not sure but you know tune in I love to talk to people you know you can ask me whatever you want to ask me if I have the answer I'll tell you if I don't I'll tell you <laughs> um, I just like to share my years of experience doing this when I started there weren't a lot of warm people doing this you know especially uh, women like I didn't hardly know any and now there's a whole world of different people from different types of the world different parts of the world doing this and I really love it and it's amazing so I can't wait to show you how this works so come on stop raining Indiana stop raining. <laughs> so anyway guys if you like my video and you like what I do here subscribe like give me that thumbs up and uh, I'll see you next time take care